Here at Biblical Hope, it's always been my goal to deliver you the truth. Even if that means if I make a mistake, I need to go back and correct that mistake, I will. And I think I made a mistake about the Walden Seas. Um, but I found something along the way in correcting that that was really cool. And I want to share that with you today. Take a look. So the story begins with a video that I did back with the Advent Defense League on the Walden Seas and the Sabbath. And uh, it was specifically a work by an inquisitor, 12th century inquisitor, Moneta of Cremona. And we had a video that responded to, to that, what we're after is the truth, and that's what matters. And so... Um, Let's take a look here at some of the statements that he said. So he's not a native English speaker, but he evaluated the Latin translation. And you're going to see here where we went wrong, uh, where I went wrong. Um, Did Monet of Cremona use Galatians 4.10 and Colossians 2.16 as an argument against the observance of the Sabbath by Wald and Seas? Those Christians who criticize Seventh-day Adventists especially attack the claim of Adventists that the Waldenses kept the Seventh-day Sabbath. Hmm. The Advent Defense League, in response to such attack from Miles Ketterson of Einstein Adventism, made a video where it presented historical evidences to support that claim. The Advent Defense League invited James Bowen to do it. The name of the video is Did Miles Really Say This About the Walden Seas? Now, one of the first things that you should know is um, as he goes through this Moneta of Cremona work, and I'm going to skip ahead here because my argument was in my understanding, and you're going to see where I got my understanding here in just a second, um, I actually got my understanding from this work right here, which was published by Dr. Gerard Domstigt out of Andrews University. And Moneta of Cremona was a 12th century inquisitor who published a polemic against the Waldenses. He was attacking them, and Gerard Domstigt states Moneta concluded his dispute by referring to the Apostle Paul's letters to the Galatians and Colossians stating against these heretics, namely the Cathari and Waldenses, it is that we find what is written in Galatians 4.10, ye observe days and months and times and years. And it adds in verse 11, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you. Indeed, the result is like, uh, is that you labor in vain. Okay, so um, <clears throat> that was where I had gotten my translation. Now, I'm not an expert in Latin. I don't claim to be an expert in Latin. I do the best I can with the tools that I have. Um, and so the author of this YouTube response uh, does have some experience in Latin. The illo mandato, memento udim sabbati sanctificus. About that commandment, remember to sanctify the Sabbath day. The first and only section is titled De Sabato et Dios Dominico, about Sabbath and the Lord's Day. In this chapter, Moneta discusses that Jews observe Sabbath. The Jews kept this commandment to the letter, paragraph 1. In the second paragraph, Page 476, he says, Before we proceed further... Now, for those of you who don't know here, he's actually quoting from Manetta of Cremona's work uh, in the Venerabilis Patris. It is a reprint of Manetta from 1743, and on page 476, this is the operative section right here. It's the same section that Dr. Gerard Darmstadt quotes as well. And you can see all of the Latin right here. Uh, you can find this on archive.org 
But nevertheless, let's continue to the operative point. We must add, then he gives his apology for Sunday observance. I will not read it. You may pause the video and read it yourself. After giving his apology for Sunday observance, at the end of the fifth paragraph he says, We also observe other festivals from the constitution of the Church, that is, veneration of the saints and in their memory, that is, that we may be mindful of their works in order to do them. Behold, what a reasonable cause for the institution of the Church, but that she can establish is clear above chapter 6 of this part. And after this follows that paragraph 10. Who does object? Moneta, as Bowen himself claims. No, Moneta says that it is the heretic who objects, not Moneta. Against what does the heretic object? against the observance of the festivals by the Roman Catholic Church. So, it is Waldenses and Cathars who use Galatians 4, 10, 11 and Colossians 2, 16 against Catholic Church. According to Manetta, they claimed that it is a sin to observe the days. Let's read the sixth and the seventh paragraphs. Again this, the heretic, namely the Cathar and the Waldensian, objects to what is said in Galatians 4 verse 10. You observe days and months and seasons and years and adds verse 11. I fear lest perhaps I have labored among you in vain, that is, without fruit. So I'm going to show the full translation here in just a moment. But he goes through some of the uh, some of the Latin right here. He stood accusative, uh, objicit and hereticus, etc. And his call is that Bowen should read again that chapter and see his mistake, and he himself should apologize publicly on the channel of the Advent Defense League. Intellectually, honesty requires it. Being myself Adventist, I advise the elder Cotto and Boehm to do it. Acknowledging this mistake will not harm your reputation in the eyes of the soundly thinking viewers. I appreciate their efforts in defending Adventist faith. But, uh, he goes on here, it must be done correctly down to the smallest details. So, there's a few things that we need to investigate about this. First off, I want to point out that in doing my research, I do the best I can to try and get... Uh, reliable information from those who have more experience in this than I do. Um, one of them being Dr. Gard Domstieck right here, who published the translation in Decoding Ancient Waldensian Names New Discoveries. Now, um, I think that all of us are capable of mistakes from time to time. But is it that big of a mistake? Let's take a look. I found actually an English translation here that mirrors that translation that uh, Etos or the, the Eastern Eagle has, uh, has given. And here it is right here for the entire work. Let us proceed to the tenth head and consider this commandment. Remember thou keep holy the Sabbath day. The Jews kept that commandment to the letter. One reason why the Lord directed them to observe the Sabbath was this, that they might remember the beginning of the world and not say that the world was co-eternal with God. Whence the words of Exodus 31.16, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath and observe it in their generations. Now, all of this right here is discussing the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath. Now, <clears throat> One of the things that we find is when we get down here, he says, Moreover, it was a sign and a figure of the spiritual Sabbath among the Christian people. Wherefore, the signified being come, the sign should cease. But that it is a sign appears from the above words of Exodus 31. But it must be known that as the Jews observe the Sabbath, so we observe the Lord's Day with this exception. 
that they abstain from some things on the Sabbath from which we do not abstain on the Lord's Day. We observe that day by appointment of the church and in reverence to Christ, who was born on that day, rose again on that day, and sent the Holy Ghost on that day. For if it were enjoined to the Jews to observe the Sabbath in memory of their material liberation to the glory of their liberator, why shall it be unlawful for the church to appoint that day for a festival in honor of Christ and in memory of our spiritual liberation from the bondage of the devil affected by Christ? Also the Jews sabotage that they might give up their time to the old law, which led to man to the perfect state of eternal liberation. And why shall not the church give up her time on the Lord's day to attend to the gospel which leads to perfection? That is, to the state of eternal beatitude. We also keep other festivals by appointment of the church in veneration of the saints, and in memory of them. That is, that we may remember their works to perform them. Behold, what a reasonable cause for the church's appointment. But that she hath power to appoint is shown above in the sixth chapter of this part. Against that, the heretic, namely the Catherine and the Waldensian, objects what is written to the Galatians 4.10. He observed days and months and times and years, and further in verse 11, I am afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you my labor in vain. Therefore it is a sin to observe days, and also to the Colossians uh, 16, let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink in respect of an holiday or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. The apostle was pr pr reproving those who Judaized, uh, he says, answered, the apostles was reproving those who Judaized or observed in the manner of the Jews the things prescribed in the law of God on which account they also observed circumcision, whence reproving them, he says, etc. Now, one of the things that I would observe here is there have been some that have claimed that Moneta here uh, was talking about the heretics objecting to exclusively feast days. Uh, of the church, like saints, days, etc., that it wasn't, uh, that they weren't objecting to the Sunday, okay? Um, I, I don't find that argument, and, and Atos makes that argument here. He, he makes the claim that, well, it's not, there's not conclusive evidence from Moneta that the Waldenses kept the Seventh-day Sabbath. I would disagree. And the reason why I would disagree is because the entire thrust of this chapter is all about the seventh day sabbath that's the entire thrust of this entire chapter is all about the seventh day sabbath he he references in passing feast days and other other things as well but the entire thrust is about the sabbath and the entire polemic for the entire work is about writing against the heretics okay and so Let's take a closer look, though, at the surrounding evidence as well and see if I'm interpreting that correctly. And let's see um, what the significance of this is. Now, one of the things that uh, I thought was rather cool, uh, rather interesting in my research on this, and, and mind you, this, this translation that I'm using right here mimics uh, what he said already. So I don't think he's going to argue against this translation. Against that, the heretic, namely the Catherine and the Waldensius, objects what is written to the Galatians 4.10. And we need to take a look at that verse, too, because Adventists could rightly use that verse to object against Sunday as well. I mean, we could do the same thing. Um, but let me show you here. First off, one of the cool things in researching this was I actually found an older version of Moneta. So if you go to Digivat Lib, this is the one library of out of all of them that is like, you know, if you want to find something that's like expert level of trying to decode, like this is it. Um, not that I'm any expert, but that it's just really hard. <laughs> it's just really hard to to try and and crack some of this stuff because there's no OCR technology to really search through the text. You actually have to like read through it and find it. Well, what I did is I, you know, it's Google Books and Archive.org. All of those places are a lot easier, but this is this is tougher here. So I just Googled or searched on the Vatican Library Valdenses. I just want to see is there anything on here about the Valdenses. When I searched it, came up with one work, Moneta of Cremona, right there. And I might not have found that had I not spelled it V-A-L-D-E-N-S-E-S. -E -E but um, if you click this work, I don't know that anybody has published um, any reference to this material, even amongst our scholars up to this point. I mean, I think that this is probably 
the oldest polemic work attacking the Waldenses that I've seen anywhere. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. But when I browse through here, um, this is old stuff. They say from the year 1200, beginning in the year 1200 and ending in the year 1300. And one of the cool things is, you know, I was flipping through it and like, how do you find where you're at in these books? You know, that's the, that's the tough part. I see that there's a Roman numeral one here at the top. And basically if I click through it, um, I can see when I switch to ultimately to book five right here. And then what I did is I started backtracking on book five to like, where do I get to the chapter that begins with a T? Uh, because if you go to Venerabilis Patrice and you back up right here, this one begins transiamus ad decimum caput and there's a T. So I know I'm going to be looking for like some ornate T in the actual text. So if I go back here and search, I actually, well, okay. Oh, there's a T. There's an ornate T on 296B, transiam, transiamus, mandato, the sabati, sabai. Uh, you can see it right there. And so the operative phrase in the Latin was located right here. And we can see where he actually references the Waldenses right here, the Catheri right there. And the Waldenses, there's the operative Latin phrase that we're kind of talking about here. Folio 297R and 296V. I don't know that anybody, I mean, I haven't seen it yet, anybody referencing this document. So I think that this is potentially a new discovery in the whole discussion on Waldenses and Sabbath keeping. At least the oldest primary source for Moneta of Cremona. I don't know of anything older than this. So that much is kind of cool. But let me tell you why I interpret that as not merely a rejection of the feasts um, that the church institutes, but a rejection of Sunday as well. Is remember, as I said, Moneta's entire point here was about the church's authority to establish Sunday and a discussion between Sabbath and Sunday. This chapter wasn't about feast days only that the church or saints days. This was about Sabbath versus Sunday. As you can see right here, de sabato un dia dominico. I mean, that's the thrust of the chapter. But let me show you why I interpret it that way. Because the surrounding evidence from the inquisitors uh, points to that direction. And what do I mean by that? Moneta of Cremona was not alone. There were many other individuals, in fact, who recognized Waldensian Sabbath keeping. I have this in my Sabbath uh, discussion right here. Okay, uh, so this is actually a, a translation that I, I had, uh, which I think is more of a correct one as, as Atos uh, recognized. But, <clears throat> you know, we have Francis Pegney who said that in Sabbatati came from Sabbath and that they, the Waldenses, observed the Sabbath according to the custom of the Jews. Okay. Bonacursus, though, in Dartry's uh, Spicelagium Collectio, said that not a few but many know what are the errors of those who are called Pasagani and how nefarious their beliefs and doctrine are. First, they teach that we should obey the... Uh, law of Moses according to the letter, the Sabbath and circumcision and legal precepts still be, being in force. And, you know, Mosheim recognized that this was, in Lombardy, the chief seat of the faiths of the heretics, a kind of singular party manifested that celebrated the Jewish Sabbath. Okay. And, you know, Melchior Koldas said not because they were circumcised, but because they kept the Jewish Sabbath, were the Waldenses called in Sabbatati. Here's an interesting one. Um, you know, did the Waldenses keep Sunday on holidays where they can secretly they work, arguing that it is good when they work. It is not bad or bond to work on a holiday. You know, I, I've said this before, but the Adventist position when Sunday laws come is that we will not openly work to give offense to our neighbors. Um, we don't have a problem with, with working in private uh, or... Um, going and doing missionary work on the day, but we do not give offense. We do not mean intend to give offense to those who prefer Sunday. We intend to try and reach them through the love of Christ. And what I see here is reflected that the Waldenses uh, had a similar position. That's the way I interpret it. 
um, you can you can see if you know test the spirit and see is it is it inconsistent with what Adventism teaches. Um, the Tulorpans, a Pickerding Pickerty branch, upheld that the Saturday must be celebrated instead of the Sunday. Uh, Henenbert said that, and uh, you know um, we can see this in Paul Buzar's works as well that they celebrated the Sabbath instead of Sunday. But as far as older works go. This was a work right here from uh, Heinrich Kramer. And, you know, I'm going to blow this up right here for the Latin, uh, because one of the things that I see right here is he talks about the observation of the Sabbath in the Picardy, this, these, the, the Picardy branch right here. But um, he comes down here in Illo Autoritatum Ecclesia Romana et apot, apot, Apostolice non agnosunt. So, with this, they do not recognize the authority of the Roman church. And what authority was that? It was the authority to change, or the mutationem sabbati in diem dominicum. This right here, it was to, and this is actually two different versions, if I remember correctly, of the same work. But um, uh, they did not recognize the authority of the church to change Sabbath to Sunday. It's a matter of their blindness over the change of the Sabbath. Folks, you can go to Monocursus. You can go to Kramer. You can go to Pegney. You can go to Moneta. But what I would say is consistent with all of these inquisitors is not merely a rejection of Roman feasts, but also a rejection of Rome's authority to change divine law. Now, this might not have translated into all of the Walden Seas, but there was still a faithful remnant who did keep God's true Sabbath. And so the way I would say we interpret Moneta is through the lens of the surrounding inquisitors, how they interpreted it as well, which was, I mean, the entire polemic, the entire polemic of Moneta is all about the Sabbath and Sunday. Okay, he's establishing the authority of the Roman Church, the same kind of authority that was argued at the Council of Trent. And that's what he's trying to do. And so if we go back here and we read that it was a sign of the future and spiritual Sabbath, and we observe that day, Sunday, by the appointment of the church and in reverence to Christ, who was born on that day, he's trying to bolster Sunday. And then he goes on to respond to the Waldenses about, you know, how the Jews observed the Sabbath. And so there comes that old uh, Jewish slur, if you will, in attacking them. But I want to go back to the scripture real fast. Because, you know, if the Waldenses are responding to Rome's days with Galatians 4.10, if it's the heretics, if it's the Waldenses who are using Galatians 4.10 and Colossians 2.16, let's see if that makes sense. It's important to remember that in Galatians 4.10, Paul was talking to the Galatians. They were not Jews, okay? For them, going back to the days that they formerly observed would have been going back into paganism. Um, you observe days and months and times and years. I'm afraid of you, lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. The Galatians came from heathenism. And so for them, going back to their heathen ways, they would have been observing um, heathen days, and, you know, if you think about this, even in the days of, of ancient Israel, Deuteronomy 18.10, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Now, think about this for a second. In Israel's day, did you have to observe the Sabbath? Yes, you had to observe God's time, okay, God's day. But here we read about those who observe times in a pagan sense, okay? Days that man instituted. And if you look at the evidence of like the Zoroastrian religions and others, Sunday worship went back to Babylon itself, okay? That's a longer discussion we could have, but it went back to Babylon. So in ancient Israel's day, those who used divination, observer of times, enchanter, or witch, were likely being affected by the pagan idolatry that surrounded them where sun worship was rampant. And so, uh, yeah, it was perfectly reasonable for the Waldenses to use Galatians 4.10 against the Roman Catholic Church. But, 
you know, Isaiah references too the monthly prognosticators, the astrologers, the stargazers. All of that, uh, once again, is a reference to pagan idolatry. But Colossians 2.16 makes sense too, because if you're applying that, once again, to days that man institutes or that were not required, um, all of these saints, holy days, and everything else that the church made a requirement, okay, for escaping purgatory or whatever else, um, once again, it would be consistent for the Waldenses to use those texts against days that man has instituted. But what does Scripture say about the Sabbath? Scripture declares the Sabbath to be my holy day. It's God's day. It's not something that man has instituted, but it is God's day. You can read about that in Isaiah. Okay, let's take a look at that for a second. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 reads, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Folks, it's, it logically to me makes sense for the Waldenses to object to Rome's uh, days because those are days that man institutes, that the church claimed authority to institute and change the law of God. But that does not for one second mean that, they, uh, that Rome was justified in rejecting God's Sabbath. 